guys, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands-On Learning. And today's video, we are going to be talking all about phonics and teaching kids consonant blends. So um, the most common ones are blends with L, blends with R, and then S blends. And consonant blends are basically just when you blend two consonants together. So for example, if you put L with another consonant in front of it, um, we call it a consonant blend. So this uh, consonant blend would be goal for words like glue or glare or whatever you can think of. Um, and then a lot of times we do a uh, blend with R. So we'll put a consonant with R and we'll call that a blend. And so BR would be for words like um, bright, or brim, or whatever you can think of, broom, things like that. And then with S, usually S is the first letter, and then we add um, <clears throat> consonants with that to make new words. So, for example, if I put an N with S, there I have a blend sn, and if I finish it, I can make snail. Or uh, if I wanted to put P with S, now I have sp for spin or any other kind of word you can think of. Um, so consonant blends are two consonants that blend together um, in a word. And so today we're going to be talking about consonant blends and how I am going to be teaching them using hands-on methods. And I'm going to walk you through my unit four <clears throat> of my phonics for reading program. I don't know if you can see this. This is unit four, it's all, everything is in this bin. And I'm going to show you the hands-on activities we're going to be doing to learn our consonant blends. Okay, so I opened up my bin where I keep everything for this unit. And if you already own my Phonics for Reading program, um, this video will be a great way for you to follow along and see how I am going to be using each component of the curriculum. If you don't have this curriculum, you can still follow along and learn some fun ways of teaching um, consonant blends to children. Okay, so the first component um, to this program and to this unit are the flashcard sticks. Now, the reason I call them flashcard sticks is because for all the other units, I was placing these um, flashcards on popsicle sticks, and we were using them um, on popsicle sticks in different ways with Play-Doh. But um, for this unit, I decided to try something different, and I put them on book rings. And there are three different types of flashcard sticks for each unit. So one type has the word and the picture clue. The, another type has just the words to practice. And then another type has just the pictures to practice. So we always start out with the ones that have the picture clue and the words. <clears throat> and we go through them each day. So we would go through blocks and clock and so on. And we would practice the blend. So full in float, F, L. Soul in slide, S, L. Fur in frog, F, R. St in stop, S, T. And it helps the kids learn the blend so that when they see a word with the blend, they know what sound it makes. And it kind of makes it a little bit more automatic when they are sounding things out. Then we um, pair up our flashcard sticks, or in this case, our flashcard rings, um, with other manipulatives to make it a little bit more fun. So one thing we do is, um, here I have some sand, this is just colored sand, in a little um, tin here. And um, you can use any kind of pencil or marker or anything you want for the kiddos. And what they do, I'm just trying to get the sand um, to even out a little bit. Um, is you give them a card for to make an, it easy. I would give them one that has the picture clue and the word. Um, and so, for example, here is the here's swim. Okay, so you'd give them the card swim, and then they would have to make the blend in their um, sand. So sw s w sw in swim s w. Then they can turn to the next one. They want to shake it out a little bit. <clears throat> Next one is drums. So they would, as they do it, they would say, dur in drums, D-R, and they're making the letters in their sand. Now, if you want to make it a little bit harder once they've learned them, then you could give them just the picture clues. So here I'm going to 
straighten out my sand again. Okay, it's not working very well. Okay, there we go. Um, so I give them the ones with just the picture clue and they would have to say, bull in blocks, B-L. So now that they've already memorized it, then they can practice with just the picture clue. So coal in clock, C-L, for example. Or full in float, F-L. Fur in frog, F-R, and so on, okay? So those are just the picture ones. And then um, we also practice sounding out just the words. So these ones don't have the picture clue, so they have to sound it out themselves. Snail, snail, snail. So we do the three-step method. We um, say each phenome or each sound. So snail. Then we um, blend it together with our arrow. Snail. So it's just kind of like a long, drawn-out blend. And then we say the whole word like you would read it. Snail. Um, the stars here indicate that that makes one sound. So we already learned in a previous unit on um, long vowels that when we put two vowels together, the first one says its name and the second vowel is silent. So this says A. So we have our blend here. S -n -a -l. S -n -a -l, snail. Okay? And so we would do that with each of the different um, words here. And we just go through them. And um, not necessarily all of them every day, but they are great practice. Okay, so another component to our um, unit here are fill it in mats. And what we do with these is um, we use any kind of manipulative you want to fill in uh, what the skill is that you're working on. For this particular one, obviously, we are working on blends. So I'm just going to take one of these, but you can see that there's, you know, a whole stack here of all the different kinds of blends that we're practicing. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm just going to take one. And I have a little bit of sand here on my table from um, that sandbox. So, excuse me. Okay. Um, and so you can use any kind of manipulatives you want to fill these in. I've shown you in other videos how we fill them in with like little erasers or whatever you want. Today I am going to use uh, Play-Doh. Okay. So um, what you want to do, and some of this is already rolled out because my kids were using it. Um, what you want the kids to do if they're going to use Play-Doh for this is um, to roll their Play-Doh out into long, you know, little strips. And then they're gonna fill in their letters with the Play-Doh. So um, after they fill it in, you of course want them to practice the sounds um, that they're supposed to, <laughs> practice the sounds that they're supposed to be making. So um, they fill it in and they have s and t and they put it together and they have st, st. S T. Okay, so now I have filled in um, my letters. And then the last part is to read each of the words. And what I'm going to have my students do is after they fill, uh, read the word, if they read it correctly, I'm going to have them color in the circle or you, they could put a check mark, something like that. So st ack stack. St eem steam. St op stop. St ill still, st own stone. Now we already, um, I used words that follow the patterns that we've already learned. So none of these uh, words have anything new that we haven't learned in previous units. So they either have shorter or long vowels um, and things like that. So if the student needs to um, remind themselves of those rules, they can go ahead and mark their vowels. So like for example, in steam, it's a long vowel. So I would mark the, the E long and the A is silent. <clears throat> or in stack, it's a short vowel, so I would mark it short and so on. So if the kids need that extra repetition, you could also have them do that. I'm using a dry erase marker because I have laminated um, these fill it in mats. Okay, and then if they did all of them correctly, the last thing to do is to color in the big ST circle at the end. Um, so this is like a new um, component that I added to my fill it in mats before, uh, previously, like in the alphabet unit and things, all I had was the letters to fill in. Now I've added another component as far as practicing words that go along with it. So anyways, that's just one way to do it. And just show you. So I would again um, have the kids do a couple of them a day just to practice a few of the different sounds. Maybe pick an S blend one, an R blend one, and an L blend one for each day. So that would give the kids three different ones to practice and they're practicing three different types of blends. 
Alrighty, another component um, that you guys have seen, if you've seen any of my other videos, are the um, fluency strips. And so uh, these are basically just to practice reading fluency. And so all of these ones obviously practice words with blends. Um, beginning blends. And so what they would do, of course, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, um, then this will be new to you. If you have, I'm just going to go through it really quick. So hang in there with me. Okay. So what the kiddos would do, for example, let's just, here, let's do this one. All right. So they would do k, er, ab, crab, crab, s, n, ail, snail, snail. They go through the whole thing. If they get it correct, they color in the smiley face, they go back, do it again. If they get it correct, they color in the smiley face, go back, do it a third time. If they get it correct, they smile it, color in the third smiley face, and then they're done with that um, page. We only usually do one sheet a day. So there are 10 of these. So that would give me us enough to do 10 days. Also, um, if they're having trouble, we'll do the same one again the next day. So that would even give us more days of practice um, besides 10. Plus, we can go back and do them, you know, over and over again. So, but they, this, set gives you 10 and then the other set gives you 10. So the other set um, has the missing blend and it has the picture. So they have to decide what the missing blend is. This one would be print. So per in print, P-R. Bull in blocks, B-L. Fur in frog, F-R. Soul in sleep, S-L. Um, Gur in grad, G-R. Coal in clam, C-L. They get it correct, they can color it in. You can also have them write the blends with their dry erase marker if you wanted. You know, so here's print and blocks and frog. I've also had my kiddos um, go ahead and use like their magnetic letters and just place them on top of the box. So I know that they know what the blend is for that one. So for sleep, they could go ahead and put their magnetic letters on top of the box. Um, so I've had them do that where they fill up all the boxes with their magnetic letters just to add a little bit more hands-on fun. But the, mo main, um, the main reason we do these is for fluency. So practicing them over and over again uh, for fluency is the point. But yeah, adding in a little bit of hands-on work doesn't hurt at all. So um, yeah, we like doing that as <clears throat> well. And by the way, uh, I like printing these, as you can see, on bright colored paper. It's called Astro Brights, but you can print them on white paper too. That's fine too. Um, but the paper I used here is called Astro Brights, and I really love it um, because it makes it a little bit more engaging when it's colorful. And I do laminate mine, and I put them on rings because I want to be able to use them forever. But if you had a whole classroom, these would be great to just um, print out on half sheets and um, not laminate them at all and just hand them to the kiddos and have them do it at the end of a lesson uh, as kind of like an exit slip or something like that just to practice fluency and that would be great too or to send them home for parents to practice fluency with their kiddos stuff like that so anyways that is that all right another component to um our unit here are the books and so these are our blend books and there are um, three that look like this, S blends, R blends, L blends, and then I have three that are, no, three or four, three. I have three that are stories that use blends. And so, um, for example, on each blend book, it has the rule. So consonant blends are groups of two or three consonants whose individual sounds can be heard as they blend together. So we will review the rule before we read. We will also use the blends on the front cover to practice. So I will have the kids go bull. And if they can remember from their flashcard sticks, I will have them give me the clue word that goes with it. So bull and blocks, B-L. Coal and clock, C-L. Full and flag, F-L. Goal and glue, G-L. Pull in, is it plug? I think. Pull and plug, P-L. Soul and sleep. S L. Okay. And then we will go through the books. So for example, this first page here, book, o, ox, blocks, blocks. And then <clears throat> I do not expect the kids to be able to read the entire sentence, but they may be able to at this point because we've been through a couple of units of phonics already. Um, so see what your kiddos can do. If they cannot read um, the sentence underneath, then it is the teacher's job to read it. And then 
um, the student can repeat, okay? So it's always good to model for the student and then have them repeat. <clears throat> so, Blake likes to play with blocks. And then you say to the student, okay, you're going to read it now with me. And then they will repeat with you. Blake likes to play with blocks. I always have them repeat with me. Um, and that gets them confident. And then eventually, hopefully, they will start to try to sound it out and read it on their own. <clears throat> Okay, and then you can see that the, um, if any of the, if the BL was used in the sentence, it is highlighted in the red color. Um, you don't have to print these out in color, uh, but it does help to print them out in color because it is highlighted for the kiddos. So anyways, we would go through the whole book. You can see it goes through just different words that um, begin with that blend. And then there are some um, ways to practice at the end. It says, say each blend sound. Think of a word that starts with each blend. So they will go through and if they can think of the clue words or if they can think of a different word that begins with that blend, um, they can do that as well. So um, that's what those pages look like. This one has it inside here. <clears throat> anyway, here's the, the R blends and here's the S blends. Pretty much the same deal. Now what I like to do a lot of times with these books is match them up with um, some hands-on ways of practicing. So if I wanted to practice the, um, let's take this page for example. See Jake skate with skill. Okay, so the SK blend. Here I have just some really fun um, stamps. These are Melissa and Doug wooden stamp set. And uh, what I would do is I would have the children pull out the S and the K <clears throat> to practice that blend. And one thing you can do, of course you can do this on paper and then they would need a stamp pad. But another thing you can do is you can match these up with your trusty Play-Doh. And it is a lot of fun. What I have them do is to push out the Play-Doh and make the Play-Doh flat. Okay. And then <clears throat> they can make the word with their letters. So I have SK for my blend. And then I'm going to make the word skate. So S-K-A-T-E, or, so you could have the kids make the word skate because it matches, or you could say, can you come up with another word that starts with S-K? Um, so let me think here. We have skate and skill and skip. I can think of skip. So maybe the kid would think of skip. Okay. So in that case, they're going to take their um, stamps. You can see it's a stamp and they can just stamp it right there in their dough. So I have S K I P. Now I have the word skip in my dough and of course you could have them do it on paper as well if you wanted to keep a record of what they were um, stamping. But either way it's super fun just to match up the book sometimes with other manipulatives to make it um, a little bit more interactive. So the other type of books that come with this unit are um, little readers. And so, um, for example, this is called, this one is called Jungle Spotted. So it's all things you might see in a jungle. And of course the word spot has a blend there. Um, but as the kids are reading, <clears throat> they will see that there are blends in many of the words in the sentences. So, it says, toucan spots a slug that slides. And the kiddos should be able to read at least the words with the blends. Um, you may need to help them with a few of the words, but for the most part at this point, they should be able to sound out a lot of these words. Okay, Steve spots a snake. And most of the words that I used, for the most part, use um, the skills that they've already learned, like long and short vowels, things like that. There may be a few words that you may have to help them with. A monkey, like monkey, has a little, uh, has the EY in there, which they have not learned yet, but <clears throat> um, I needed to use it for the sentence. But, so there are a few words that you may have to help them with, but they may be able to pick out that word just from the picture clue as well. Okay, anyway, a monkey will swing and smile, and you can see that the blends are highlighted in red here. So, anyways, here's this book. And then at the very end, um, it goes through some of the blend words that were in the book. And it says, read these S blend words from this book. Color a smile face each time you read them. Here's some smile faces. If you um, laminate these books, then they can do it with a dry erase marker. I did not laminate my books. 
and so um, I would probably just have them maybe use a manipulative to um, mark each time they read. Let me show you how I would do that. So for example, using any manipulative you have, here I have some gems. They would read all of the words. If they read them correctly, they could cover up a smiley face each time they read correctly. So if it's not laminated, that's another option for you. Um, if you want to be able to reuse the book is to do it like that with a manipulative. Um, otherwise, if you don't plan on reusing the book, then they can go ahead and color it in. All right, so another component to um, this unit are the beginning blend um, build it strips, I think is what these are called. And this is where they're just going to build the word. So um, this word, if they look at the picture clue, is steps. So they're doing the ST blend. And these are great to use with um, trusty magnetic letters here. And so they would just fill it in like this. So S. E, E, P, S. Okay, that is one way to do it is to fill it in like that. Another way is just to use your a dry erase marker and to write it. <clears throat> like so. Okay, so they're just practicing Lots and lots of beginning blends. I love these because it does have the formation of the letters so they can see if it's um, a middle letter, if it's top letter, if it's a basement letter, things like that. So this would be plug and so on. All right, so there are just a ton of those. All right, so another component to this unit is the um, activity centers. So this unit has three different activity centers and I'm just going to kind of quickly run you through them. Activity centers are hands-on activities that keep kids engaged in learning the skill. Okay, so the first one is called Beginning Blend Puzzles. And I keep them in these little bags and these labels here um, come with the unit and it says find three pieces of a blend puzzle then fill the matching word, place all pieces together. So what the kids are going to do is, for example, find three pieces of a blend puzzle. So this is the three pieces that match. Then they're going to say cur in crab, C-R. Then they have to find the right word, and they have to match it up. And that one would be finished. So there's crab. There's another one. This one is, and I would not give them to them where they all match, unless the student really needed a lot of help. I would have it mixed up, but... I'm just showing you how it works. And then this one would be braids and so on. So I would give them, you know, a few pieces mixed up, maybe two or three puzzles together at once that they have to do and match up. And I wouldn't give them the whole stack of all the puzzles mi mixed up, but I would just give them, you know, two or three puzzles mixed up and then they put them together and then they read the words and so on and they practice the skill. For this next activity center, I am going to use a pocket chart here, but you do not have to have a pocket chart. This can be done on a table as well. And this is called Beginning Blend Candy Sort. And it says, sort the candy blend cards to match the correct blend candy store. So there are little pieces of candy, okay? And then there are also candy stores. And so what I would do is I would just have the kids do um, two or three candy stores at a time not go too crazy. So here I have um, the PR candy store and the GL candy store. So per in prey or prize and gull in glue or glare, whatever you want it to be. Okay, and then what they're gonna do is they're going to go through their candy cards and try to match them up to um, the correct candy store. And of course, here you can see I have whoop, um, just a lot all the different candy stores for all the different um, options that we've been practicing in this unit. And then they are going to match up the cards. So I'm going to show you how you would match up PR and G. Okay, so I found the cards that match. And then what the kids would do is just put them by the correct candy store. So for PR, I have print, pretzel, and prey. And then for GL, I have glasses, globe, and glue. All right, this last activity center is Play-Doh Make and Learn with Blends. And it says, choose a mat, use your dough to make the picture shown, 
or a different picture that starts with the same blend. Then use your dough to blend, make the blend letters. Okay, so for example, um, the first one here, the, the cards look like this. Okay, I can flip through them and kind of show you. All right, the cards look like this. And I'm just gonna take this one on top. And it says uh, SN here, and you can see a picture of a snack. So the kids could use their dough to make a snack, or um, they can use their dough to make something else that starts with SN. So I am going to make a snake, because snake starts with SN. Um, but like I said, if the kids can't think of a word, a different word that starts with that um, blend, then they can just make the picture shown. So, okay, so our blend is SN. And I decided that I'm going to make a snake. This is my, it's my snake, and I'm going to give him like an eye. Let's see if I can give him a little snake eye. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, the kids can mess around with their Play-Doh and make the picture that they want to make. And then this um, line down here allows for the kids to write the word that matches. So I'm going to write snake. And if they don't know how to spell the entire word that they made, then they can just write the blend letters. So they would just write SN on the line. But I know how to spell the word snake, so I'm going to write that. <laughs> and then the last part down here is to use your Play-Doh to make the letters. So I'm going to use the yellow here. Some of my yellow has a different color in it because, you know, my kids use this. And so it gets a little messed up, you know, how that is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, this Play-Doh to make the letters. Okay, and so um, what I did is I made the letters S N out of the Play-Doh. And that's what the kid kiddos would go ahead and do as well. And then they can go ahead and do it with all of their different cards that it comes with. All these different blends. Lots of practice. Alright, we're on the last thing here, guys. And the last part that we will be using to practice our consonant blends are these flip it books and so there are four flip it books in this unit and the first flip it book here is a mixed practice book and these are really great you could take them anywhere just with a dry erase marker and the kids can use them um, that way or you can add manipulatives manipulatives to them to make them more interactive so um, this first flip it book here it says circle a picture that has the same beginning blend so I have blender and blanket would match here I have snake and snowman would match. Another way, if you didn't want to use your dry erase marker, is of course to have some kind of manipulative like these um, available and then the kids can just mark their answer with the manipulative and so on. Okay, so here we have read the words, circle the word that matches the picture. So plain matches this one and obviously have the kids read the entire list before they go on. So they would read plain, plug, planet, play. It gives them practice with the blend and then they would circle the one. So crab, craft, crane, crayon, and we're going to go with crane. Okay, this page is where they would either write in the missing blend or they can use magnetic letters and so on. Um, so for this one, we have crib. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my magnetic letters and I am going to make crib with my magnetic letters but of course you could also have them write the letters so this is flat with for a flat tire so I have cur and crib and full and flat here they have to match the word to the picture so these are beginning blend words here I have skunk and then I have to be able to find the right um, picture and either mark it with my manipulative or of course circle it with my marker same thing here with blimp you know, flint matches, so on. These ones, they would color it in. So here I have um, some blueberries, so I would color in the bowl blend. And of course, since it's dry erase, I can erase it and use this again. And here I have tree, so it's the TR blend. Yep, so, yeah. And of course, if you didn't want to have them color it in, just have them mark it with a manipulative, so on. Um, these pages are kind of fun for clips. You could have them clip it on, clip on their answer. Um, so this one, trace the line that matches the beginning blend. Okay, so does flamingo start with CL? No, it starts with FL, so it's not that one. 
Does frog start with DR? No. Does stop start with ST? Yes. So I would trace that one. And then on this side, it would be DR for drum. The other two do not match. And so on. So something fun I also found, another way to have the kids mark their answers. If you didn't want to use dry erase marker and you don't want to use any kind of manipulatives, <clears throat> are to use these... Um, book tapes. So these are tape, these are colored tape that are removable and um, they are to either highlight a word. So for example, did the skunk smell bad? You could have them highlight the words that have the blends. So especially if you decided to print out these flip it books black and white instead of color, um, this is a great way to have the kids find the words in the sentence that have the blends. Okay, and then of course these are removable, so they could just take it right off. Isn't that cool? Um, another thing that I like to use these for is to mark the answers. So it says, circle the picture that matches the sentence. Well, instead of circling, we're going to use our tape. So Tim likes green grapes. I find the green grapes, and I'm going to use a little piece of this to mark the answer. Did the skunk smell bad? I'm going to mark the skunk because he smells bad. All right, <clears throat> he matches the sentence. Now, the reason I like this is because then if you are the teacher and you are not able to sit with the student to see if they've marked the right, see if they marked the right answer, like let's say you had them using manipulatives and you aren't with them, they have to take those manipulatives off and turn the page. This way, you can see that they marked the right answer because you can go back and look. And then when you're, when you're all done checking, you can take the tape off and they can reuse it. So um, my kids love, and of course kids love using tape and just anything different than, I mean, of course, dry erase marker is fun too. Kids love that, but just anything different to make it fun. So I love these. Um, I got them in a pack with like six different colors and they're just a lot of fun and of course reusable. So um, we get a lot of use out of them. So I could take these, you know, off and tell the kids to use them again on another page. So this one says, read the word, circle the word that matches the picture. So here I have slop, slug, sled, sleep, and I am going to mark the one that matches. Fruit, so I have Fred, fruit, fries, frog, and I am going to mark the one that matches. And then this page is a great one to talk about why we capitalized Fred, because it's a name. All right, so anyways, um, they're just gonna go through this book and finish up my um, laminator, kind of bent some of the pages, but anyways. Um, so there are four different books for the kids to practice and um, get a lot of <coughs> use out of these. So um, book four is just more words matching and book three is more making words, making the blends that are missing. Oh, sorry, can you see that? Making the blends. And then book two is more um, finding the blend that matches and coloring it in or marking it. So anyways, that is it guys. That is how we are going to practice our phonics and learning um, consonant blends. I am working on the unit right now of um, digraphs and it is almost finished. I am currently working on the flip it books. I'm almost done with those. I have pretty much everything else done. I just have to write the um, books, the readers. And once I'm done with that, then everything else is done for that unit and I will add it to the curriculum bundle. So if you already own the bundle, um, the digraph unit will be coming I'm hoping by next week, because uh, I, like I said, I just had to finish the flip it books and I just have to finish the um, readers, the little um, phonics readers, and that's it. Everything else is done for that unit. So, all right guys, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time, bye.